Hey everybody, it's the Burger Dude, and today I want to show you how I make vegan Nashville hot chicken. It's super easy, super delicious, and super spicy. So let's get our chicken together. I like to use these Gardein chicken scallopinis. Just make sure you thaw them overnight in the fridge or on the countertop for half an hour or so. And a lot of people ask me if they need to do it with just a single patty or a double patty. The fact of the matter is you can do whatever you want. I'm uh, actually cutting these in half and then I'm gonna shape them into like chicken finger type of shapes. And I'm gonna make a bunch of those, four of them to be exact. And uh, you can also completely just disregard my suggestion to make a patty with two and you can make a single patty like I am right here. And I just like to kind of mash it into a, a rounder shape and then now I'm gonna take those two and mash them together and make an even bigger chicken patty. And it really doesn't matter, it's whatever your preference is. If you want a bigger patty or a smaller patty, totally up to you. Either way, once you get them all situated, throw them in the fridge to keep them firm. In the meantime, I wanted to show you all the benefits of being able to throw together a sauce. So I'm starting off with a bunch of vegan mayo and some plant-based milk, as well as some white vinegar. And then my next ingredient is some Cajun seasoning. And I'm not sure if it's blasphemous to put Cajun seasoning in a Nashville hot chicken sandwich, but I'm gonna do it anyways. And all I really wanted to do is just show you all that, you know, it's very easy to throw together a sauce like this. Here I am, I'm adding a little bit more milk because I decided that I wanted it to be a little bit thinner. So I go ahead and whisk it. And now I feel like the texture is good. And I go ahead and give it a taste, but I decide, you know what? It needs a little bit more zip. So I add a little bit more vinegar. And then I gave that a taste and it was perfect. So again, I just want to kind of really show you all that it's very easy to throw together a sauce. Just go ahead and experiment with whatever ingredients you like. And uh, you really don't need measurements all the time. And that's also, I just didn't feel like measuring stuff. In any case, we're going to get together our wet and dry dredging stations for frying. So I've got some plant-based milk, some hot sauce, use whatever you like. I got Texas peat. We're going to do some brine from a pickle jar. And then after that, we're gonna add some apple cider vinegar. And this is gonna create a vegan buttermilk. Just whisk it, let it sit for five to 10 minutes to thicken up. You wanna make sure it's nice and thick so that the breading will stick to the chicken and not fall off. If it falls off, you'll be very sad. So just make sure it's nice and thick, add more vinegar if it's not thick enough. In the meantime, let's get our dry ingredients together. So we've got some flour, some cornstarch, and then up next is some baking powder. And the baking powder and the cornstarch are very important. They're gonna help you get a nice crispy breading. We're gonna add in some more Cajun seasoning because I like to be blasphemous. And then of course, this is Nashville hot. So let's throw in a bunch of cayenne. I don't know how much that was, maybe half a tablespoon. Just throw in as much as you like. You know, if you like it spicy, throw in a bunch. If you don't like it spicy, leave it out. It's up to you. Either way, we're gonna heat up some oil. Just make sure you got enough to cover the chicken. I'm using peanut oil. I believe you can use any oil you like except olive oil. I don't recommend that. I do recommend one of these deep fry thermometers. They're gonna make your life a lot easier. So while our oil is heating up, we're gonna go ahead and bread the chicken. So what we're gonna do is first dredge it in some of the wet and make sure you shake off all the excess batter. And then next you're just gonna get it in the flour and just lightly pat the flour. Make sure that you get all of the chicken coated evenly, get every little nook and cranny. And then what we're gonna do is just repeat the process again for a double dredge. So go ahead and get it in the wet and then get it back in the dry. And uh, just make sure, again, shake off all the excess and just try and get it coated as evenly as possible. And I've had some folks tell me that they've had uh, the breading fall off, which makes me very sad. And I honestly don't know why that happens. Uh, my guess is because of the breading technique and the oil isn't being hot enough. So just make sure that your oil is up to 375. And once it is, carefully add your chicken to the oil. And at this point, you just wanna kinda of keep an eye on it, make sure it doesn't burn. You're gonna go ahead and give it a flip if you need to. You shouldn't have to play with your temperature too much, but if you do, then you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. Either way, once it looks like that, go ahead and pull it out, let it rest on a rack. And that is a double patty, so you can see how big it is. And then there is a tender or a chicken finger. I don't know the difference between a chicken finger and a chicken tender. Either way, that's what it looked like. I couldn't help myself. I just had to eat one. It was very delicious. So here I wanted to show you the size comparison. This is what it looks like a single patty. So, you know, pretty good size piece of chicken, respectable. 
It was delicious. I ate it within an hour of this. But here's a big guy. This is the double patty. So as you can see, pretty much twice as big. And you know, it's really up to you. If you want a big old piece of chicken, make the double. If you want a more modest piece of chicken, use the single. And that's them right there. I'm letting them rest. In the meantime, we're gonna throw together our Nashville hot sauce. So we're gonna start off with some cayenne, a bunch of cayenne right there, some garlic salt, a little bit of brown sugar, and some freshly cracked black pepper. And now we're gonna add some of the hot fry oil. And I added about, I would say that was about half a cup or so. And then go ahead and just give it a whisk and just get it to whatever consistency you like. If it's too thick, add a little bit more oil. Either way, once you got it all whisked up, it's time to brush our chicken. You could also toss the chicken in the bowl with the sauce if you like, but personally, I like to brush it. It helps me control the distribution a little bit better. And again, you just want to kind of get every little nook and cranny. And once they're ready, it's time to eat. First up are my chicken tenders here that I've got with some fries. You could also serve it on top of a piece of Texas toast with some pickles and fries again. This is a traditional way to do it, I suppose, but I also like to put it on a burger because I'm the burger dude. And what else am I gonna do? So we're gonna add some of that Cajun mayo that we made earlier. Go ahead and give it a nice, generous slathering. Add some pickles. Those are actually bread and butter pickles, which I never thought I would like, but I like them on a spicy sandwich. They kind of counterbalance with the sweetness. Add your big old piece of chicken. A little bit more sauce for the drips. Gotta do the drips for the photo op. And then it's time to uh, just put that top bun on there. And now it's party time. It's time to dig in and eat. I mean, look at the size of that thing. It's, it's coming right for you, isn't it? Nope, it's coming right for me, as always. And if you're sitting there thinking to yourself, well, gosh darn it, I wish it was coming right for me. There's a simple solution. Go ahead and make it. I'll leave the recipe in the description. Super easy. Super delicious.